Hey YouTube, you know what time it is? <laughs> Chapstick time. The only thing on my face other than other than skincare. This video is gonna be a series, I think, because I have brushes and I wanna systematically go through the brushes I have. So if any of you who are watching this are beginners or if you do have questions about makeup brushes, hopefully this will help you decide like what brushes you want to get what brushes you want to use what brushes you want to try the type of brush i will start off saying all of my brushes are synthetic because my skin has an adverse reaction to natural hair brushes okay <laughs> so i have nothing on my face intentionally except skincare because i want to actually show you how i use the brushes without actually putting product on and using the brushes and so Welcome to the trollness. So first I'm going to start off with, I guess I should do foundation and concealer brushes. This case I think I got from, I want to say Target. And it goes together, like if you were to put them together, they clip. So this is the clip and this is this clip. So I just sit them out separate. The idea is that you just put brushes on one side, clip together and travel with you. But then for me, I'm like, you're messing up the bristles if... It ends up sideways or upside down so anyway these are my foundation and powder brushes and I'm going to go through what is in here and I'm going to take them out and put them back as I use them so these are the brushes this is this I like this one this is the Sephora 78 brush it is really dense it's really soft and it's really easy to clean I have a thing about when I wash a brush I want it to look like it's brand new I don't tend to get um, white haired brushes because to me they just never look the same and then I keep thinking oh my gosh this is gross it's dirty when it's really not but because the the it stains but this one doesn't cleans well it's soft this one I like for foundation because as you see I have a big face and this I can do my whole face very quickly and because it is tapered I can get into the corners of my nose if I'm using it for concealer or just to get foundation around my eyes this allows me to get into the corners and so that is why I like this one. Another foundation brush I found I've been using a lot lately is the number 64. And I think this one is on its way out because it's not as soft as it used to be. It has not shed on me. I think only a few, very few of these brushes have shed on me. But this one, it just doesn't feel the same as when I purchased it. But this one I like for foundation. And it, it is a little prickly. It didn't used to be. So I think it's just getting tired. <laughs> and so I like this for foundation to stipple it on. It doesn't really allow me to get into the corners as well as the tapered brush. But this one, I can quickly just stipple my face and then buff in the foundation um when i want to and where i want to and so i do really like this brush keeping with sephora brushes i do really like the sephora collection brushes the ones that i have and even back in the day when they had the silver handle i had a lot of them and i right now i only have a few this one is the number 56 brush and it says flawless airbrush this one I like it for foundation, but because my face is so big, it takes me a while. So this one I tend to just use for concealer or sometimes I will use it for powder because then I can just um, set my concealer that way. But this, if you have a smaller face than me, this one I think would be really good for you to use. It just takes me a while, as I said, because I have a lot of space to cover. Another um, Sephora brush, this one says foundation, it's the number 47. I like it because of the shape because it does allow me to just get here. And I tend to, even though I have this with my powder and foundation brushes, I use it more for powder because I can just powder here. And because of the angle, it does allow me to just powder under my eyes and then go about my day. And so that is that one. This one is the number 50, I'm sorry, the number 80. It says contour highlight. I don't highlight, I think it just adds a textured look to my face and so I don't do that. So this one I use for concealer and it is a dome shape. <clears throat> and this, and the way I apply concealer, I put a line here and like a line here, a line here, a line here. And if I'm really bothered by the redness here, I'll put, you know, I'll put concealer here. 
And so this allows me just to dab it. And once that's pretty much blended, I will lightly sweep underneath my eye. And I like this shape brush because it does allow me to get into the corner and also into the crevices around my nose. The, on the same line as that one is the Stippling Concealer Brush. This is the number 52. This is an angled one. This one I really like for, for concealer because it is flat and I can really just press it in and just dab it. The same as the dome shape one, but this one, it just helps <laughs> that it's not domed. However, when I go to swipe it, I do have some trouble sometimes. So this one is more so just patting it in. And if you wanna go in with the dome shape brush to lightly sweep it, this will allow for that. Or you can just lightly sweep it this way because this one is the flat one, well, the angled one. And it's good for around the nose too. This brush is a Real Techniques brush. I was gonna say I like all the Real Techniques brushes, but I don't. <laughs> I tend to like some of the, the fuchsia color and also the ones that are purple. Some of the other ones I really didn't like. This one says, what does it say? This one says Insta Pop Cheek Brush. So it's supposed to be for blush, which I have used it for blush and it was nice because it is fairly big and I have all of this right here. <laughs> but I find that I like this for foundation. And because it is larger and I have a larger face, I can do everything like really, really quickly. And also because it is angled, it allows me to get underneath my eyes. And because it's also tapered here, I can get, you know, into the corners of my nose. And sometimes I will use this for powder after I put foundation on and concealer because then I can just pat the powder underneath my eyes and so this I really really like this brush and it's soft enough where you can also swirl not really swirl but I guess that's a swirl like after you stipple in <laughs> your foundation you know if you need to go in and lightly sweep over it this allows you to do that as well and I do wash my brushes after every use. I don't, I'm not one of those people who will wait and just wash them all like once a week or whatever. Because I want to get the product out, especially if it's a cream or um, a liquid product. I want to get that out of the bristles. And I think that's what helps some of my brushes last as long as they do. Because I am cleaning them after every use. This brush is a Fenty number 170 it says setting and so i use this for the fenty powders and you see what i mean this is clean but you can still see the color from the product in the brush i don't like that and i cannot get it out oh there's a hair that's disappointing like out of all of these one comes out and i'm like oh and so i do use this for powder <laughs> and usually for me i do stipple powder first because it's, I'm putting it on top of a liquid. And so I don't want to just go in and, and do this and possibly smear. So I do have a tendency to do this. And then I will lightly sweep. Or if I'm just using it for contour, I'll lightly just, you know, do one of these numbers. You know, do across my <laughs> square forehead. <laughs> Make sure I get it to the little corner. <laughs> and under my chin. So that's what I really like this one for. This one is the Fenty Foundation Brush, number 110. I purchased this because the reviews were good, and I'm like, okay, it's a nice, dense brush. And I tend to like longer-haired foundation brushes because it's easier for me to clean. Because when I, I put soap in my hand, I wet the brush, get it nice and sudsy, rinse my hand, rinse the brush, and then I hold the ferrule, and then I squeeze and pull out. Yeah, that sounded like something else. Um, <laughs> and so I hold the ferrule because I don't want to like pull too hard and like the whole thing just come off. And so I hold the ferrule and squeeze. And for brushes that have shorter bristles, it's harder for me to squeeze from the bottom and press the water out. That sounds better. <laughs> But I find that I like this one better for concealer because I have a big face. Look at this. Like this would take me longer than a larger brush. And so I find that I've just been using it for concealer. 
And so that's what I've been using this one for. And I do like it for that. It's not my favorite, um, but I do like it. And all of the brushes I have, I do they do feel soft on my skin. The only one that's feeling prickly is this one, but I do believe that one is on its way out. It's about to move somewhere else. This one is the Rare Beauty. I think it, it's the concealer brush. And when I was looking at the reviews, um, people were saying they were using this one more so for foundation than concealer, and they liked it because of the shape. And I like it because of the shape as well. Because it is tapered, you can really just get in with your concealer and around your nose or wherever if you have little crannies little crevices you want to get into I have used this for foundation but it takes me a while because of the size of my face but I do like this one not my favorite but I do like it and so now for just my powder brushes this will be great because I'll have foundation and powder brushes all in one video and then I'll do my eye brushes separate so this is my powder and blush brush case. Some of these I don't use as often anymore because I use a cream blush. I use the Bordeaux Brat from Fenty, which is a cream blush. I'm also allergic to nickel. So anytime I'm using a pressed product, especially um, pressed powder foundation or pressed powder blushes whenever it hits pan and when you're swirling your brush in and whatever that is transfers to the brush and when I would use it my face would break out wherever I put that product and it took me a long time to figure out why every time I use this it's breaking my face out it didn't do that before and I was looking online and I was reading about, you know, why is this, you know, breaking my face out now? It didn't before. Did they change the formula? Whatever, whatever. And someone said you might be allergic to nickel. And so I tested it. And so when I had, when I hit pan in the center of something, I put a piece of tape over it. And so I would still use the product and it didn't bother me. But then when the tape would come off or when I would start hitting pan around the edges of a product, and I'm looking to see if I have something here to show you, but the only thing I can show you is my NARS blush. Now if this was round and it was deeper, like such as a MAC blush or um, a MAC powder foundation, when I would even start to hit the inside of the pan here, and of course in the center, my face would break out every time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm allergic to nickel. And so I started trying to find cream blushes to use, and I really like the Bordeaux Brat. Um, and I've also switched to mostly loose powders for my face my skin is just really temperamental so <laughs> some of these brushes i don't use for blush even though they're blush brushes um because i'm using the cream i'm sorry yeah the cream blush and to stipple on my cream blush and to blend it in i use a foundation brush one of the ones i just showed you but this is the fenty number 195 bronzer brush i like the shape of this because it does allow me to just get right here if I want to just do a contour. And actually you can kind of see where my jawline is, which I like because then I, I know exactly where to put it without, you know, making faces. <laughs> and I also use this sometimes to set under my eye and my oily T-zone area. <laughs> so that's what that one is for. I have another Fenty brush. This one is... Oh, another setting brush. I have two of these. This one, I have not used as much. And you can see where it started to stain already. So I'm just mainly using the other one. So when I get really like grossed out by it looking dirty, even when it's not, then I'll switch to this one. But the same concept, I'll use it for, you know, um, contour, bronzer, for that. <clears throat> this one, <laughs> silver handle Sephora brush. I've had this probably about 15 years this one is the number 50 and it says powder brush and this one is also 150 powder brush but look how different they well not too different but the silver hair one is smaller and not as wide as the the new 150 i mean i'm sorry the new number 50 but this one <laughs> is well loved and it's still soft like I'm telling you, these silver, if you guys still have some of these silver handle Sephora brushes, let me know down below that you do. Because I, I, I'm like, I cannot still be the only one that still has some of these. But this one, you can set powder under, oh, and it's still so soft. 
you can set um, under your eye you can just lightly dust you know powder all over you can turn it sideways and use it for blush you can use the tip and use it for contour or powder i mean i just really oh, this is so soft i love this brush and i did just show you this 150 i'm sorry i did show you this number 50 i have two of them i have a tendency when i really like a brush and if there's a sale going on or if i have rewards points i have a tendency to buy a second one so especially when i get to the eyeshadow brushes i have at least two of most of them so i have two of the number 50s this one you can tell by the coloring that i this one that i use more because this one, and the same concept with well that's dusty <laughs> the same concept with my fenty setting brush i'm just using this one mostly and then <laughs> when it starts to look old <laughs> then i'll switch to this one so i'm going to put that one away <laughs> but i use this the same as the silver handle number 50 set powder. and this one's bigger so it's nice and the other one's nice too this one to me is not as soft as my silver handled one which is strange but then maybe not but the same concept and i like that it's tapered because you can you know really just set under your eyes you can set around your nose and look how look at this if you have a high forehead look at this it almost covers like my entire forehead and as big as my face is, like if I just took powder, I could be done my entire face like super fast and just go about my day. So this is great if you have a big face. <laughs> the number 50 Sephora. What does it say? Flawless light powder. The silver one just says powder. The last brush in here is the Sephora number 72 Demi Fan. I bought this one when I was trying out different bronzers because of the shape. I'm like, this is, I don't even know what to say, it's amazing. I just really like it. And so I was thinking, you know, do your bronzer. And I'm like, this is, this is really soft. And because of the shape, you can just get in there. Or if you're just using it for contour, which I don't, I use bronzer for contour, and I know it's not contour, but that's what I call it. You can just do it here, and then if you want to feather it up, it's really just easy. I mean, the brush does it for you. If you're doing bronzer, like, look at this, you just swoop over and then just blend it upward. Like, the shape is just, oh my gosh. And I'm talking slow because I'm trying to focus on what I'm saying because this brush just feels so good. <laughs> and so that's it for my... <laughs> I did say what number it was. So that's it for my foundation and powder brushes. Let me know what brushes you guys use. Feel free to link your videos below for me to check them out to see what you have. And I do hope that this was helpful to someone who is looking for brushes, curious about brushes. What do I use for foundation? What do I use for powder? What's the difference between, you know, a dome-shaped brush like this and a brush like this? How do they each work with foundation? What's the point in getting, like, a smaller brush? What's the point in brushes that are, you know, shaped different? What's with the stippling brushes? And so I hope this was helpful to anyone, to someone. I'm sorry about that. And if you have any questions, just leave them below. And I will see you there. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. I forgot something, of course. I forgot to show you my hourglass dual-sided powder brush. I love this brush, this side of the brush, for setting my under eye concealer and if I am just setting my T-zone area and along my small lines. That's what I love this side for. And also, <laughs> the same side. <laughs> and also, if I'm using a bronzer as a contour, you know, I'll put a little bit right here. As you can see in the hollows of my cheeks already anyway, which are pretty noticeable, and so, which helps me know where to put it without making faces. And so I'll just use that to put some color there. Or if I just want to put some in my temples or, you know, just along the perimeter, you know, of my forehead and of my face. I do like this side for if I am dusting powder all over to set my whole face. And I like it because it's so big and because I have a big face, I can get done very quickly. And also, I do sometimes use this. When I was using powder blush, I would lightly dust powder blush here. But now that I am just using loose setting powders because of my 
allergy to nickel every time I hit pan I would break out on different areas of my face and so now that I am just using pressed powders to add different colors on different parts of my face I may just take some powder and put it here on the tip of my nose I don't like the disco ball on the nose like I only have on skincare and my nose is already highlighted I'm like why highlight that even further <laughs> so usually whatever powder I'm using for bronzer or for contour, I'll, I may also lightly just dust that on my nose and on, on my forehead. So that's it for this part. Again, this is the Hourglass Brush. You've probably seen it all over YouTube. I'm not going to babble. This entire video is already way too long, so thank you for being here. I didn't need to say that. This video isn't over. <laughs> I forgot to show my sponges when I was showing the part of the video that you just saw. So I just keep them in this jar. I don't use them that often because they're behind where my brushes are so I don't see them. So I probably need to put them in the front so that I will use them. I do like using sponges. I want to say it took me some getting used to, but really it kind of, yeah, it did. Because when I first tried sponges, like, it did not work for me at all. And then I'm like, I figured out how, you know, you wet them, you drench them, and then you squeeze the water out. And then you use them and it's fine. The first time I used it, I was like, this is, I don't know what these people are talking about. This doesn't work. So I'm going to show you my different brushes. As you can see, most of them are the same. <laughs> so I'm just going to take out the ones that are different and count the ones that are the same, which is the Real Techniques brushes. I think, I don't want to lie to you, but I, and say exactly how much they cost from Ulta, but I want to say under six bucks for just one. And sometimes they have a set of four that's less than 20 bucks and I really like these I've never bought the beauty blender I'm like I am not spending twenty dollars for a tool that you have to replace in three months because that can add up and so I really do like the real techniques brushes I have three in here four five six seven of them so when they do get really grungy and dirty or when I clean them and they no longer no longer look clean I can just throw it away and use another one and some of these I did get in a set of four and some I purchased like in a set of two blah 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 has the real technique symbol on it so as I said you rinse the rinse it you drench the sponge this is what I do I don't know what other people do I squeeze it in my hand put my hand under water and then I slowly open my hand and I do that a couple times to make sure that the sponge is completely 100% saturated and then I squeeze the water out and then I either take <laughs> a hand towel or a face cloth or a paper towel and I wrap it around the sponge and then I squeeze it further to get the excess water out and so I'm left with just a really damp sponge that's not dripping with water and then um do I put foundation on here no I'll dab foundation on my face I think and then put it on I think that's how I do it I haven't done it in so long I need to do that again but anyway you guys are familiar with sponges I like this one because it has a tip here if you want to get into what well, this tip is good for around my nose I like that this side is flat because then I can just press under my eyes a few times I have used it after I applied foundation to set my under eye with powder and so that's when the flat side came in handy because I can just lay it right where I want it and so that's why I like this shaped one this one I don't know why I got it I think just oh this is really soft <laughs> it's like a marshmallow actually it's softer than the real techniques brush this is more dense but this is really spongy it's a sponge it's supposed to be anyway <laughs> I bought it because the shape was different just to see like what's the big deal with the different shapes of the sponges this one again the point is good for around my nose it doesn't really get into the corner of my eye as well because this is round and like this is not round and so I mostly just use the point for around my nose and I will press here this way on this part I like that it's easy to hold with this dip with this divot in the middle because I don't want to get foundation and stuff all over my hands the bottom part I just use of course to pounce foundation everywhere this one takes me a while because I have a big face and so this is just like are we done yet are we done yet are we done yet so I tend to <laughs> I tend to not use it because it just takes me just like okay are we done yet I'm like okay no we're not done yet <laughs> but I am glad I got it and I got it for like less than six bucks less than five bucks somewhere i forget where the real techniques you can get from ulta 
these so i have two of these and i like these and I purchased them specifically for the shape. And the reason I love this one is because you can use this to get, uh, look at that, it fits like right under your lash line. So if you are putting down um, concealer, this fits perfectly. Well, for me, it fits perfectly right, right there and around the corners of my nose, it gets like right in there. Yeah, 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 get it out of here. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but that's what I like this side, that side for. And this side, I don't know what I use this side for. I don't think I use that side for anything. I don't think I use that for anything. Because it, no. I don't. But I definitely <laughs> do use this side. And for foundation, I will pounce it on the side. Which, this does cover a more wide area than using this side but this side is good as well but it's like are we done yet are we done yet are we done yet are we done yet versus if i use this length you know this covers a wider area and i can get done quicker but i really 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 love this one for this right here it just gets right there and right up in there i love it the last one i bought this one too just for the shape to see how it worked as you can see it tapers up you have a wide part here you have the small round part at the bottom and which you there you go yeah so you it's blocked off right here this i like for getting you know concealer and foundation around my nose and also it doesn't fit as well under here as this one as this side but it, it still does the purpose because it is that flat area. And so I do like it. I'm glad I got it. I don't use the, <laughs> the bottom side. Because okay are we done yet? Are we done yet? Are we done yet? Are we done yet? But if you have a really small face. Like this would be really great for you. And also if you're doing detailed work. I don't do contour. And you know all of that stuff. But this would be great for that. Because it has that sharp edge. You could just contour here. Or if you want. Or use this side and do a contour and that may be what this is for like I don't know what I don't know what this side is for if you guys have this if one of you have this let me know what this side is for because I have no idea like is it to just do your note like I don't know <laughs> I'm being silly I don't know but this one will be great for detail work you know if you're contouring a cream contour laying that down like I, I don't know because I don't contour and all of that stuff but so those are my sponges. If you have any questions, let me know. What is your favorite sponge to use? If you've used the, um, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> if you have the Beauty Blender, how, how does that compare with the Real Techniques brush? Or if you have this one, or if you have one like this, like is your go-to the, the Beauty Blender because that's the original, you know, makeup sponge or have you not tried it in lieu of more inexpensive sponges and how does that work for you so let me know and i'll do this as a separate video because 10 minutes and i don't make the other one super long i'm not sure yet but you'll see when it's uploaded how i did it so thank you for watching and you will see me in the next video